um, ignore the things now, they're doing the side of it please, but um, okay. So, good afternoon everyone. I will be presenting to you The Miller's Tale. Oh wow, I need this, okay. <laughs> Sorry, okay. What is a miller exactly? Well, the miller is someone who operates the mill, and the mill mainly grinds wheat into flour, and we use flour in a lot of things, so that's really convenient. Um, so here's a little description of the miller. His name is Robin, and he's described as a churl. Who knows what a churl is? Who would like to answer that? I wanted some class interaction with this, so who would like to answer what a churl is? Anyone? Just No? Does anyone know? All right, a churl is like a really kind of mean-spirited person, just like not a good person. So the miller is drunk on his horse, and it, it describes him as the miller, who of drinking was all pale, so, sat, so that unsteadily on his horse he sat, he would not take off either hood or hat. And he really, really wants to tell this story. And he goes after the knight because, well, originally he was gonna, the host was going to have the monk go first, but the miller's like, no, I have to tell my story now. In the night, um, the host originally wanted someone more worthy to go after the night because the night's story was so good. But the miller's like, no, I have to go. So he insists that he goes, and the host is like, fine, you're a fool, but you can go. So the different sections we have are um, John the carpenter and his lodger Nicholas. So I'm going to start with that. So John is a really wealthy carpenter, and he's dwelling in Oxford, and he has a poor scholar named Nicholas who is lodging with him. Um, but Nicholas turned to study astrology, and so he knows all about like the stars and all that sorts of stuff. And he knows, he's really good at convincing other people to believe things that may not necessarily be true, and you'll see that in the story later. Um, so the carpenter's marriage. The carpenter marries um, an 18-year-old girl, her name is Allison, and the carpenter was definitely quite a bit older than Allison, um, which makes it kind of weird, but... He loved her more than his life, which it says in the story. Um, the carpenter was quite vulgar compared to this woman. Like the woman's kind of like good, a good person, and the carpenter's just like this really mean-spirited, vulgar guy. Um, Allison, the carpenter's wife. So here's a little description of Allison. She's very youthful. She's kind of skinny, small. She wore a girdle and an apron. She has like a licorice eye, where in the, where the carpenter describes it as like. He has a sexual desire for this woman, and she's got thin eyebrows, and she's as skittish as a pretty cult, as they describe her. Um, Nicholas courts Allison. So Nicholas flirts with Allison um, after John decides to leave. John is the carpenter, who decides to leave to go to town one day. And Nicholas grabs her by the hips, and he's like, I want to have sex with you. And Allison's like, no, no. I mean, she said no because... I'm already married, but Nicholas was really good at persuading people to do things and believe things. So, the, so then, so, so, he's, so Allison's like, oh, okay, and, the, and finally they had sex and that, and that's as far as I'm going to go for that part. Um, so, so then we have Absalom, I think that's how you pronounce it, the parish clerk. Um, Allison went to church the next morning, and this, there's this guy who's also another scholar of John the Carpenter. And he immediately falls in love with Allison. Allison's this girl that like everyone's gonna fall in love with. He has curled hair, uh, gold, cur golden curled hair, kind of parted straight at the top, and he's got red cheeks. So Absalom's affection for Allison, like I said, he falls in love with her right away when he sees her, and he also describes her as like licorice. So like that sexual desire he has for her, and he also said if she had been a mouse and he was a cat, he would maul her a bit. But that I'm, I didn't like that. Mode. Yeah. So, what? so, um, so Allison, a Absalom played love songs for Allison, and the carpenter woke up, and he's like, "What are you doing here?" And he's like, "Get out." So Allison likes Nicholas better than Absalom and the carpenter. So Nicholas decides to come up with an idea because he wants to spend another another night with Allison. So they both they both desired to be in each other's arms when they slept that night. So. Basically, Nicholas came up with an idea where he was going to have Allison tell the carpenter that he was sick and he had to be locked in his chamber. So that works out for a bit, and, the, and Nicholas locks himself up, and the carpenter comes and he has a slave try to knock down the... Sorry. 
All right. Yeah, and then, um, so, so Nicholas locks himself up, and he, so basically, John finds out, John finds him, and he has a slave knocked on the door. So, it, it appeared that Nicholas was possessed. It looked like he was possessed, but he really wasn't. He was trying to trick the carpenter. So, the carpenter wakes him up from his trance. And Nicholas's story about Noah's flood comes. And according to his reading of the moon, next Monday a flood would drown the entire world within less than an hour. And Jonathan, John, John believed this. And he, Nicholas said that he, God had recommended that John and uh, Allison be separated, be far apart. And John believed this. So Nicholas advises that John, is, that John prepares for the flood. And Nicholas says, you need to go out into the town tomorrow for, for a day, spend a day out there. And you need to get all the necessary food items and you need to get three tubs so we can hang them and we'll all go in the roof so we can survive. You'll use your ax and cut the rope so the tubs will fall and we'll sail during the flood so we won't drown. So the carpenter prepares for the flood. He goes out to town and gets all the stuff he needs. And then Nicholas and Allison go to bed. <laughs> so, so they're all on the roof together. And they're all like, hush, hush. And, they, and the carpenter finally goes to sleep. And Nicholas and Allison climb down the ladder and go to bed together. And they sleep in each other's arms. Oh, ah. And um, so they laid together until the church bell rang really, really early in the morning. So Absalom tries to court Allison, like Nicholas already courted her. So this is where it gets interesting. Um, it's early in the morning. It's early. <laughs> it's early in the morning, and it's really dark out. Really dark. So Absalom tries in, to go to the carpenter's house window, the house's window, and Allison's in the room with Nicholas. And he Absalom chewed licorice and spice to make him smell sweet, and, and then. He attracts Allison's attention. So, he combed his hair and he thought it would make him more gracious and he stood beneath the window. Then, Allison's like, go away from the window, you jackanapes! She yelled. Absalom wanted a kiss and he promised to go away after he got a kiss. So this is when Allison and Nicholas decide to prank him. That's where the kissing of bare ours comes in. So, basically what happens, I'm gonna read that one to you because I like that one. <sighs> this Absalom plumped down upon his knees and said, I am a lord in all degrees, for after this there may be better still. Darling, my sweetest bird, I await your will. The window she unbarred in that in haste. Have done, said she, come on and do it fast before we're seen by any neighbor's eye. Then Abs this Absalom did wipe his mouth all dry, Dark was the night as pitch, I dark as coal. And through the window she put out her hole. And Absalom no better felt no wor nor worse, but with his mouth he kissed her naked arse. Right greedily before he knew of this, a back he left, it seemed somehow amiss. For well he knew a woman has no beard. He felt the thing all rough and long as <laughs> <laughs> It said, oh my alas, what did I do? Hey, she laughed and closed the window too. And Absalom went forth, a sony pace, a beard, a beard, cried clever Nicholas. Now by God's corpus, this goes fair and well. Oh, wow. <laughs> so if you understand what happened there. <laughs> so, so Absalom searches for revenge. So Absalom goes back into the town and goes to a blacksmith. The blacksmith's like, what are you doing so early here? And he's like, I need um, a hot poker that I can poke. And he's like, okay, okay, I'll give it to you. And he's like, what are you going to use it for? He's just like, oh, nothing, none of your business. So that happens. And then Absalom returns to Allison's house. It's almost over, guys, don't worry. Um, Absalom offers a ring and a kiss, and he's not really going to give that to her. He's going to try to prank Nicholas. So, and then here's what it says. Of gold, quoth he, I have brought you a ring. My mother gave it to me, as I'll be saved. Fine gold it is, and it is well engraved. This will I give you for another kiss. 
This Nicholas had risen for a piss and thought that it would carry on the jape to have his arse kissed by the, this jackanite. And so he opened the window hastily and put his arse out very quietly over the buttocks showing the whole bum. And there too, said its clerk, this Absalom, oh, speed, sweet bird, I know not where thou art. So basically Nick, Nicholas goes, gets up and he sticks his butt out the window because it's still really dark out. So, so here's where it also gets interesting. Um, Nicholas basically farted really loud in Absalom's face, and but Absalom's ready with his hot iron poker, <laughs> pokes Nicholas, and this is, and then this is where it gets kind of ironic. So he yells, "Water, water, help!" Because I need water. My butt's all burning, and and so then this is when the carpenter awakes. He didn't really yell that other stuff, but he yelled, "Water, water." So the carpenter wakes up thinking the flood has come. He uses his ax to cut the rope and then down he fell in the tub and he basically breaks his arm. The people in the town are surrounding him, like laughing at, this, at the fact that he believes this fantasy and they're like, oh my God, what is going on?